Hey there, Saki here from Saki Tech. In today's video, we will master every aspect of your Note 7's camera. As you know, the Note 7 has one of the best cameras in the smartphone world. And when you have such a powerful camera at your disposal, it is best to know everything your camera is capable of. Otherwise, it may go to waste. So let's dive in and master the full tips, tricks, and features of this fantastic camera. All right, so the first tip I wanna talk about is called the quick launch feature. So basically you can double press the home button twice very quickly and it's gonna launch the camera. So your phone can actually be turned off. It could be in your pocket and let's say you saw something very interesting and you wanna quickly take a shot. All you do is pull the phone out of your pocket, double tap this button, it launches the camera and you quickly take a shot and then you move on. Now the only thing is you wanna make sure that this option is in fact enabled. So when you launch your camera from your home screen, just go to the settings and scroll all the way down and make sure that quick launch is in fact enabled. So you can disable this if you don't want it, but if you want it enabled, make sure it is in fact enabled. It's a very good feature and very useful for a quick shot. The next feature that I use all the time and I highly recommend that you guys enable as well is called voice control. So basically if you enable this, you can use your voice to take pictures by saying things like smile, cheese, capture or shoot. You can even say record video and that's going to actually start to record video remotely using your voice. So let's enable this. Let me go back out here and let's say cheese. And there was a quick shot. And if I say record video, it's going to start to record video, which is absolutely amazing. Now one feature I always use in conjunction with voice control is actual timer. So if you go into the settings again, on the top, it's going to actually not on the top, but over in the middle, it's going to say timer. So you can enable the timer. And obviously what that does is when you take a picture, it could take two seconds, five seconds or 10 seconds to take the shot after you press the shutter button. So let's just do the two seconds for a demonstration. And what I do is I actually combine this with the uh, voice control. So when I say cheese, as you can see, it actually took two seconds before it took the picture. Now let's go back into the timer real quick. I'm gonna show you one more thing under the timer setting. If you tap on timer, at the bottom here it says, you have the option to enable to take three pictures after the timer countdown is complete and a photo is taken. So that's a good thing because then you can go in there, look at the three photos that you just took and pick the best one and delete the other two that you do not need. So if that's something you would like to do, make sure this is enabled. Uh, let's go back out. I'm going to show you one more thing that's very important over here. Now, these are just the basics. I just want to get out of the way and we're going to dive into some more advanced features. Now, make sure grid lines is in fact enabled. So if I enable the grid lines, I can have a three by three or I can have a square grid line. I prefer three by three. If I go back out here, now, if you, if you look carefully, there's going to be some grid icons on the, on the phone, but that basically allows you to better align a photo uh, in the viewfinder. So just make sure that little thing is enabled. And final simple tip, I'm gonna get out of the way. If, if you scroll all the way down, you can disable or enable the shutter sound. So maybe you wanna take a picture, but you don't know people to know that you are taking a picture. Make sure you disable the shutter sound. And then when you take a photo, it's not gonna make that clicking noise that it usually does. All right, so if you wanna be a little spy, you can disable the shutter sound and take pictures quietly. Though I do recommend that you turn off the flash as well, because if you have the flash on, people are gonna see that you're taking the photo anyway. All right, next tip, let's go back into the settings. And if you scroll all the way down, over here it says volume keys function. So what you can do is you can use the two volume keys on the left side of your phone to actually take pictures. So they can act as shutter buttons if you, if you so desire. Now if I tap this, I actually have the option to use these buttons to actually record a video or change the system volume. So it's all up to you if you wanna use these keys, you can use them for taking pictures, recording video, or you can use it for system volume, which is the default setting. I like to use them as shutter buttons, so I'm gonna go back to take pictures and that's the way I like to have it. Now back in our camera, what I wanna show you guys is if you scroll over, you get access to modes. Over here you have modes like the auto, which most of us use, the camera does everything in the background automatically and takes the best possible picture. But then you have the pro mode, which I'm gonna talk about. This is an advanced mode. 
catered for actual photographers that understand how exposure works. And I do wanna talk about that, but we're gonna leave that for the end of the video. It's a longer topic. But what I really do wanna talk about is the modes and the fact that you have access to the slow motion, the hyperlapse right through here. So always swipe over and access modes through here. Now, one thing you can do with the modes is you may have on your phone less than what you see on my phone. That is because I went to the store and I got more modes that are available. All you do is tap download and that takes you to the Samsung store. And over here, anything that you see here that is a download symbol next to it, simply download it, okay? So these are free modes that you can add to your camera and it's gonna enhance the use of your camera. And of course, each mode has a description of exactly what it does. So let me go back out here and let's take a look at the dual camera mode tap that if you don't have it make sure you download it what it does is it gives you dual cameras it uses the rear camera and the front camera at the same time so you get this kind of effect you could take a picture on that side and you can take a picture of yourself at the same time so if you don't have this just go download it and if you don't want it you can uninstall it later so just be aware that you have access to a lot of modes with samsung and if you see less than what i have right here just go and download them from the store. Now, one more thing I like to do with the modes is maybe you guys like to take slow motion shots and regular shots all the time, but launching the camera, swiping over could be a little bit of a trouble. So what you can do is you can set shortcuts on your desktop, on your home screen very, very quickly. All you do is you tap this button right here. You say, add shortcut on home screen. And then you simply pick the modes that you use many many times a day so i can pick the auto mode that we all use i can pick the slow motion mode which i think a lot of people like and of course the panorama mode that people like to use as well when you click done and if you go home you're going to see three shortcuts and every time you tap on the slow motion it takes you straight into the slow motion video mode and you can quickly start recording you don't have to swipe over and pick an actual mode same thing with panorama so boom we have we are directly in the panorama mode and same thing with auto what i like to do is i like to grab these guys and put them into their own little folder okay that's a separate tip that i just use for myself and now you can put all your camera modes into a nice convenient little folder you can color code that folder if you want and you can rename it of course click done and there we go. All right, that's fantastic. Let's go back in the camera and continue browsing the features. Now, when you go into the settings, and this is where everything happens, okay? So go to the settings. First thing you have to make sure is you understand that there's two sections here. There's the rear camera settings and there's the front camera settings. On the rear camera settings, you can tap on the picture size and it can modify uh, the resolution for your picture. What I really like here is, I don't really go lower than the, um, the higher resolutions, but this is the highest resolution you have. But if you want a wide screen photo, you can go to 16 by nine at 9.1 megapixels. This is gonna give you wide screen pictures as opposed to more squarish. Now this is also widescreen, you have a four by three aspect ratio, but 16 by nine is true wide screen. What I recommend that you do is take one picture in this mode and one picture in this mode and take a look at the difference. And then that way, anytime you want a certain type of shot, you can pick between two of these guys or you can go between any one of these different options. Now, again, in the rear camera, if you go into the video, and this is very important, if you tap on video, you have a bunch of different options. You can record in 4K, you can record in 1080p at 60 frames per second or 30 frames per second. Now, just so you know, UHD is Ultra HD. That means 4K. QHD is 1440p. Full high definition is 1080p. And then high definition over here is 720p. Now, the difference between this guy and this guy is when you pick this mode, you record at 30 frames per second. But as you can see, if you pick this mode, you record at, um, let me go back here. If you pick this mode, you record at 60 frames per second. Whenever you record at 60 frames per second, you get a smoother, more stable video. 
but the downside is it's going to take more space on your hard drive, on your storage space. If you were to record at full high definition at 30 frames per second, the video is not going to be as smooth or stable, but it's going to take less space. So remember, you got 4K ultra resolution, and that's at 30 frames per second, but then you got the full high definition at 60 and full high definition at 30, and this is 1080p over here, okay? That's 720p, that's 2160p, and that's 1440p, and you can get those numbers by looking at the second half of the resolution over here. 720, 1080, 1440, 2160p. Now let's go back out here, and I just want you guys to be aware that with the front camera, you have the same options. So you can go in there, and you can change the picture size. And of course, the front camera is not as good as the rear camera, so you get less options and lower resolutions. But again, the front camera here can record in 1080p. It can actually record in 1440p, which is a quad HD resolution, and then you can do 720p and these other options. Let's go back out. Now, sometimes when you take a picture, it might be a little bit distorted. So just make sure if you want that, if you see pictures that look distorted to you, make sure you enable shape correction and that's gonna make sure any kind of distortions are corrected automatically so you don't have to worry about it. And then over here, we have tracking autofocus. If you enable this, what it does is, it's gonna allow you to focus and track a subject selected on the preview screen. So let's enable this. Uh, and let's go back out over here. It's enabled. Let's go back to video and let's put this object over here Tap on it and now what's going to happen is it's going to actually track this object If I move this object that focus is going to follow that automatically. So this is actually great uh, in for sports photography for moving objects so your kid could be playing on the field you can just tap on your kid and it's going to start tracking your kid so if your kid moves on the field to a different region, it's simply going to keep focused on your kid and you can take a picture of it. You can do the same thing with animals, birds, airplanes, whatever you need. So just make sure uh, if you want to do that, tracking autofocus is enabled and I'll let you know that on Samsung Galaxy Note 7, it works magically. All right, let's scroll down for a second. I'm going to show you one more important tip over here. It's called location tags. So basically, if you enable the location tags, your camera is gonna use the built-in GPS to know exactly where you took the picture. So let's say I disable this and I go to Washington DC and I take a picture of something and it's not that popular. So what the camera is gonna do is, is not gonna store the location of that place. But if you have this enabled, it's going to store the exact location of that image so when you go into your photo and you go into the information field, it's going to show you on the map exactly where you were. And just to show you what you get with the location tags, let me just launch a picture. And then on the picture, tap on the settings on the top right and click details. And what that's going to do is it's going to give you the date that you took the picture, the time and the exact location uh, printed for you and also the exact location on Google Maps itself. Now, if you tap it, it's going to launch Google Maps and you will know exactly where you took that picture. So that's why the location tags could be important for some people. Now, one more thing I want to talk about in the camera settings is if you take a look over here, when you enable tracking autofocus, the video stabilization feature, uh, which stabilizes your video, is not available. It's been grayed out. So make sure you disable tracking autofocus if you want to use video stabilization. And again, what video stabilization does is it stabilizes the video that you're recording so it looks nice and smooth. But make sure tracking autofocus is disabled. The other thing, if I go back into video size over here, if I switch to full high definition 1080p at 60 frames per second, the video stabilization is actually available in this uh, Note 7. So that's beautiful but tracking autofocus is never available together with video stabilization. Now one problem is when I go to 4K video recording, 
the video stabilization again is not enabled. So I just want you to be aware of these little things that might cause trouble in the future. If video stabilization is something you're used to, remember it's not going to work at 4K resolution. Now as promised, I want to talk about the actual uh, pro mode. So let's scroll over and here is the pro mode. Now pro mode allows you to actually manually adjust the exposure settings. So the exposure is based off of a couple things like the ISO, the shutter speed, and the aperture setting. And what you can do in the pro mode is you can manually adjust these settings to get the right exposure. If you're not a professional photographer, this is a very hard subject to actually understand. But let me just do a demonstration. So here's the ISO right here. If I tap on it, it brings up a meter. I can actually change the ISO automatically as you can see and that's going to adjust the exposure on the fly. Uh, oops, let's focus right over here, ISO. So let's put ISO into automatic. Let's go to shutter speed. Let's just change the shutter speed and you can see the difference. So right now there's absolutely no light going into the lens. It's dark because the shutter is actually opening very, very quickly. Okay, so again, if you're not a professional photographer, it's hard to understand, but you can keep each one of these settings at auto and play with one setting. Now one thing I like here that actually is very easy to understand is manual focus. Normally the camera lens automatically focuses on the subject. Uh, with, the, with the auto mode you can tap this button here and you can actually do manual focus. Okay, As you can see when I manually focus on objects they blur out, blur out of vision or come into focus as I desire. Okay. So it zooms in on the object just to make sh uh, focusing easier. But uh, basically if I was here and if I let it go, this uh, subject right now is out of focus. If I tap this, and if I bring it back to auto over here, then it's going to focus automatically. So with the pro mode, you can have everything automatic or you can manually adjust the ISO, the shutter speed, the exposure, the white balance, and the manual focus, everything that you need to do. On the top, you even have some super advanced concepts over here. You can actually switch between the metering modes. You can do spot, matrix, or center weighted uh, metering modes. And again, I cannot sit here and teach you about photography. I just want to let you know you have these options. And again, over here, uh, if you tap this, the autofocus area becomes the center of the camera. If you tap it one more time, it's actually multi points. As you can see, there's a lot of points over here. They are all focus points. But if I tap this, the uh, focus point is the center of the camera. Now it's not the center, it's multi point. Now, either you're a professional photographer and you can enjoy this, or you can just play with it if you're a newbie or an enthusiast. Just play with it, and as you play with it, you may actually learn something. Now, while we are in this mode, I want to tap the settings really quick. I want to go into the picture size over here and I'm going to show you that you can enable save raw and JPEG files. So again, if you want to save pictures in raw format, you can. You have to be in the pro mode. And when you take a picture, it saves the picture in the raw mode. So I can take a picture right now and that's going to be saved as a raw and as a JPEG picture. With the raw files, I can take those raw files Put it on my computer, my PC or my MacBook and I can do a lot of post processing. Again, an advanced concept that an everyday user does not have to worry about. But if you ever need it, it's there and you will know where to go. Well, I mean, that's basically it. Remember, if you scroll over, you can pick modes. You can download extra modes if you go to the shop. And if you go back over here, you can add shortcuts in the mode screen. You can tap this and you can actually uh, add shortcuts on the screen. You can even tap this button here and it gives you information pertaining to each mode that is available. Again, that people for people that like to learn stuff, uh, it wouldn't hurt to sit down and read what each mode is all about. Alrighty, so let's go back over here. And uh, like I said, if you go into the settings, just make sure you understand this is the rear camera and that's the front camera. And these are just the common and generic features that we already talked about. And, uh, I just want to make sure that you guys understand and use every feature that is available to you on these powerful cell phone cameras that almost rival the everyday point and shoot cameras. And sometimes they're even better. All right, well, thank you for watching this video, guys. 
Uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, drop a link below and make sure you give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to Saki Tech, and I'll see you in the next video. Have a fantastic day.